All right. So if you want to learn how to sew, there are certain things that you absolutely have to have, and then there's other things that are nice to have, but aren't absolutely necessary. Since we're going to be starting with quilting, because it's the easiest way to teach basic sewing skills, you're going to need quilting cotton. Now, similar to quilting cotton um, is broadcloth, and I'm gonna briefly explain the difference between the two. Quilting cotton is 100% cotton. It comes in solid plain colors, as well as different prints for just about anything you can imagine. It's preferred for quilting because it's heavier than broadcloth, and again, it's more versatile. It's easier to work with. Broadcloth comes in, can also come in 100% cotton, but it also comes in different levels of cotton versus polyester in the same fabric. It tends to be thinner and more slippery than quilting cotton. The main difference between the two though is that cotton shrinks if you put it in the washing machine and dryer, whereas high levels of poly cotton do not. So polyester and cotton, um, you can get some that are 65% polyester and uh, those won't shrink nearly as much. But they also don't wrinkle as much. Cotton tends to wrinkle or get creases in it, which you have to use a, a steam iron to iron out. So I have here some quilting cotton. It is sold in different ways. Um, you can go to a fabric store such as Fabricland here in Canada or Joann's in the States, um, and they'll have a wide variety of quilting cotton that you can buy by the yard. It usually comes in widths of 45 inches to 60 inches, although for quilting, you can get quilt backing that comes up to, I think it's 100, maybe 100, inches wide, I'm not completely sure. Um, it's more expensive than regular quilting cotton. The other way that quilting cotton comes sold is in what they call a fat quarter, like this one, which is 18 by 21 inches. It's also sold, fat quarters are sold in bundles that have five different fat quarters all bundled together and usually they coordinate with each other. So they're all different, but they look good together in a quilt. It makes matching fabrics very easy when you want to um, learn to quilt. You can also buy pre-cut fabric. This one is one yard. And again, it'll be 45 inches wide. As well as in a roll like this, that is two and a half inches wide by 42 inches wide, so the whole width of fabric. This particular one comes with five different fabrics, so there's 20, 20 pieces total. So you're getting four of each one. This is very useful for using for binding the quilt. Uh, because you want to encase all the different layers of fabric and the um, batting to make it look nicer and, and um, not fray. But this is also good for making small squares or doing strip quilting, and we'll look at that later. So we are going to be making a very basic quilt that's basically a checkerboard pattern. We'll have solid color, solid uh, white squares, and I'm going to be alternating between two different colors. There are several different ways that you can cut fabric. I recommend that you would have a good pair of dedicated sewing scissors. They're just for sewing so that they will stay sharp because fabric can be quite difficult to cut if you don't have nice sharp scissors. These ones are made by Fiskars, which is a nice entry level brand. They're, they're quality, but not very expensive. So I recommend Fiskars. 
I also recommend having a second pair of scissors that you can use to cut paper and, and other things like that that you would need to cut, that you don't want to um, get notches or, or um, dull your, your regular fabric scissors. Another way that you can cut fabric is with rotary cutters, like this one. This one's by Ulfa, which is one of the major sewing brands here in Canada. And you also have ones that are made by Fiskars as well. They come in different sizes. Your most common size is 45 millimeters, which is this one. That's your most common size. I also have a small one. This one's 18 millimeters. You can see the difference in size, which is good if you want to get into tiny little areas that need to be cut. Um, this one's a little bit bigger. I think it's 25 millimeters. And this one is 60. So what you're using depends on what you're comfortable with and um, how fussy the project is that you want to sew. I typically use the 45 one, almost 45 millimeter one, almost all the time. You're also going to need some sewing pins. This is a magnetic holder for the pins, which I find very useful. Um, I'm forever dropping pins on the floor and with this, you just have to turn it over and, and it'll pick up all the pins for you. And sometimes you wanna pay more attention to what you're sewing rather than the pin, pin cushion. So having the magnet makes it easier so that you don't drop them. You're also going to want a ruler or some other measuring tool for cutting fabric so that you can measure it, especially for quilting. One of the most common ways to cut squares and different shapes for quilting is with quilting grid rulers. This one is six by 12, which is very, very common color, uh, sorry, size. And um, I use this one probably most of the time. I find this one extremely useful. Again, it's uh, six by 12. And then it comes in a whole bunch of other different sizes and shapes. This is four by four. And I've got a bunch of them that are bigger and smaller as well. You can use a regular ruler and make um, patterns out of paper. This is a two and a half inch square. One of the disadvantages of using a quilting grid like this is that you put it on your you put it on your fabric like this and you want to cut with your rotary tool and this gives you a nice straight sharp edge that you can use to cut your fabric. The problem is that this has a habit of slipping and moving around. So then it, you, you might have a, a less than perfect, perfect cut that's um, not straight. And with quilting, um, be, having straight lines is very, very important. I find that having a paper copy tends to move around a lot less on your fabric. So you don't have to worry about it moving when you're cutting it out. But I use both depending on what I'm doing, but we'll get into that later. Another useful thing to have is a measuring tape like this one. This one is 60 inches long and it has inch designation on one side and centimeters and millimeters on the other side. This is really good if you want to measure a person because people are not flat. It's also good if you need to measure something that's longer. The other thing that you will need is sewing thread. This is a very common, very popular brand of sewing thread. It's polyester. And it's very easy to work with. This is just a regular all purpose. And this is my preferred brand that I use for uh, sewing. You're also going to need a sewing machine. This is my main sewing machine. 
This is a computerized sewing machine. You absolutely do not have to have a, a computerized sewing machine. You want to have a sewing machine that does straight stitches in forward and backwards and that you can make the stitches different lengths. Normally, when sewing, you're using a stitch length of two and a half, but it can go up to five or down to much smaller as well. When you use a sewing machine, you're going to use a spool of thread like this that comes from the top and goes through the machine and through the needle. And you're also going to be using a bobbin like this. This one is specifically for my machine. It does not work in any other machines. And you wind some of your thread onto the bobbin and it comes up from the bottom, but I'll show you that later. You can get bobbins that are pre-wound with thread um, for the more popular sewing machines, um, but not for mine. As far as sewing machine brands, this is a fast machine. It's my favorite brand, but it's very expensive compared to Brother or Kenmore or any of the other brands. Um, but you can absolutely sew on one of the less expensive machines. Um, I sewed on a, a small Kenmore sewing machine for years and um, it works. it works just fine. Basically, um, like I said, you need a straight stitch and then you need what's called a zigzag stitch. And other than that, other stitches are nice to have, but not necessary. One thing you're also going to need is a steam iron. This is mine. Again, it's a more expensive iron. You can get any iron anywhere as long as you can put water in it to create steam because when you're working with quilting cotton you absolutely have to have steam otherwise you are not going to get smooth fabric you're going to have wrinkly fabric i highly recommend that you get a pressing spray for ironing cotton you can get a type of starch that is sold in an aerosol can it works extremely well and is not very expensive um, I use the uh, speed one, it's called uh, Speed Starch, it comes in a blue can. Um, I used it for years and then I couldn't find it where I live in Canada anymore. So I asked my um, sewing store what they recommended and they recommended this one. It's not a starch, it's a starch alternative and it works very, very well. Again, there are different st starch alternatives as well. Um, in the United States, you can get a whole selection of different ones, uh, unfortunately not in Canada. This, uh, this spray makes it extremely easy to iron cotton fabric, especially if you have very, very deep creases in your fabric, like when you buy fat quarters, such as this. You're going to get very, very hard creases in it here that you need to iron out, and it's much easier to do with the spray than it is with just steam. You are also going to need an ironing board or a pressing mat. This is the, uh, the pre this is a pressing mat that I got um, for my Cricut Easy Press, um, but it works quite well for regular ironing as well. Or you can get, again, a regular ironing board. This one is the one that I have. Um, it is extra wide. It's considerably wider than a regular ironing board. Um, I prefer that because I I iron a lot of fabric um, and not a lot of garments, unless I'm sewing the garments. Um, so having the wider makes it easier to, uh, to iron large quantities of fabric. But you can use a regular ironing board just fine. So I think that's everything that you need for sewing. Like I said, some things are optional and some things aren't. Um, this blue mat, that's the one thing I forgot. This blue mat is a self-healing cutting mat. 
it's designed for using a rotary cutter so that when you cut your fabric, you're not going to damage the table underneath, but it also doesn't get um, cuts in it that stay. So you don't have to worry about grooves in your mat. This one is a, a low quality one. Um, I think I got it at Walmart, um, but there are other brands as well, and they come in all different sizes. This one is 35 by 23, I think. Um, but yes, you can get them smaller and bigger as well. So this is everything you need for sewing. And uh, I hope you'll come back for the next installment of Sewing 101. And uh, yeah, so we'll see you next time.